this is hard for humans too to understand what which line of code is important and which is not. It's like you, I think one of your principles on a website says if 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 a code can do a lot of damage, one should add a comment that say this 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 line of code is is dangerous. And uh, uh, all caps, uh, all repeat caps. it ten times. <laughs> ten times. Uh, no, and you say like for every single line yes. of code inside the function, you have to add, and it, that's quite profound. That says something about human beings because the it's, the engineers move on, even the same person might just forget how it can sink the Titanic, a single function. Like you don't, yeah, you, it, you might not intuit that quite clearly by yeah. looking at the single piece of code. Yeah, and I think that, that one is also uh, partially also for today's AI models where uh, if you actually write dangerous, dangerous, dangerous in every single line, like uh, the models will pay more attention to that and will <laughs> be more likely to find bugs in that region. That's actually just straight up a really good practice of labeling code of how much damage this can do. Yeah, I mean, it's controversial. <laughs> like, it, it, Some people think it's ugly. Uh, Swallow well, I, I actually think like it's, it, it's but... uh, like, in fact, <laughs> I, I actually think this is one of the things I learned from Arvid is, you know, like, I uh, sort of aesthetically, I don't like it, but mm -hmm. I think there's certainly something where, like, it's it's useful for the models and, and humans just forget a lot and it's really easy to make a small mistake and cause, like, bring down, you know, like, just bring down the server and, and like, you, like, like, of course, we, t we, like, test a lot and whatever, but... There, there's always these things that you have to be very careful. Yeah, like with just normal doc strings, I think people will often just skim it when making a change and think, oh, this, I, I know how to do this. Um, and you kind of really need to point it out to them so that that doesn't slip through. Yeah, you have to be reminded that you could do a lot of damage. That's like, we don't really think about that. Like, yeah. You think about, okay, how do I figure out how this works so I can improve it? You don't think about the other direction. That yeah. could do this until a, until we have formal verification for everything, then you can do whatever you want, and you you know for certain that you have not introduced a bug if the proof passes. But concretely, what do you think that future would look like? I think uh, people will just not write tests anymore, and um, the model will suggest like you write a function, the model will suggest a spec, and you review the spec, and uh, in the meantime. A uh, smart reasoning model computes a proof that the implementation follows the spec, um, and I think that happens for for most functions. Yeah, Don't you think this gets at a little bit some of the stuff you were talking about earlier with the difficulty of specifying intent for what you want with software, um, uh, where sometimes it might be because the intent is really hard to specify. It's also then going to be really hard to prove that it's actually matching whatever your intent is. Like you think that spec is hard to generate? Yeah, or just like for a given spec maybe you can i think there is a question of like can you actually do the formal verification like that's like is that possible i think that there's like more to dig into there but then also even if you have the spec if you have the spec but how do you even if you have the spec, the spec is, it, is the spec written in natural language yeah how do you map the spec no the, 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 the spec spec would be formal but how easy okay. would that be so then wrong? i think that you care about things that are not going to be easily well specified in the spec language i see i see would yeah be, um yeah maybe uh an argument against formal verification is all you need yeah. yeah, the worry but, is there's this massive document. replacing replacing I, I, something like yeah. unit tests. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think you can probably also evolve the the spec languages to capture some of the things that they don't really capture right now. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think it's very exciting. And you're speaking not just about like single functions. You're speaking about entire code bases. I think entire code bases is harder, but that that is what I would love to have. And I think. It should be possible, and because you can even there, there's like a lot of work recently where uh, you can prove formally verify down to the hardware. So like through the you formally verify the C code, and then you formally verify through the GCC compiler, and then through the Verilog down to the hardware. Um, and that's like an incredibly big system, but it actually works. And I think big code bases are are sort of similar in that they're like multi layered system and. Um, if you can decompose it and formally verify each part, then I think it should be possible. I think the specification problem is a real problem, but... How do you handle side effects? Or how do you handle, I guess, external dependencies, like calling the Stripe API? Maybe Stripe would write a spec for the API. But like, API. you can't do this for everything. Like, can you do this for everything you use? Like, how do you, how do, you do it for... If
there's a language mo- like maybe maybe like people will use language models as primitives in the programs mm-hmm, they write mm-hmm. and there's like a dependence on it and like how how do you now include that i think you might be able to prove prove that still prove what about language models i think if it feels possible that you could actually prove that a language model is aligned for example hmm. or like you can prove that it actually gives the the right answer um that's the dream yeah that is i mean that's yeah. if it's possible that's your i have a dream speech if it's possible <laughs> that, that will certainly help with you know uh making sure your code doesn't have bugs and making sure ai doesn't destroy all of human civilization so the yeah. the full spectrum of ai safety to just bug finding uh what you, so you said the models struggle with bug finding what's the hope you know my hope initially is uh, and and I can let Michael Michael chime in too, but it's like this. Um, it should you know first help with the stupid bugs. Like it should very quickly catch the stupid bugs. Like off by one errors. Like sometimes you write something in a comment and do it the other way. It's like very common. Like I do this. I write like less than in a comment and like I maybe write the greater than sign or something like that. And the model is like, yeah, it looks sketchy. Like, do you sure you want to do that? Uh, but eventually, it should be able to catch harder bugs too. Yeah, and I think that it's also important to note that this is having good bug finding models feels necessary to get to the highest reaches of having AI do more and more programming for you, where you're going to, you know, if the AI is building more and more of the system for you, you need to not just generate, but also verify. And without that, some of the problems that we've talked about before with programming with these models um, will just become untenable. Um, so it's not just for humans, like you write a bug, I write a bug, find the bug for me, but it's also being able to to verify the AI's code and check it um, is really important. Yeah, and then how do you actually do this? Like we have had a lot of contentious dinner discussions of how do you actually yes. clean a bug model? But one very popular idea is, you know, it's kind of potentially easy to introduce a bug than actually finding the bug. And so you can train a model to introduce bugs in existing code. Um, and then you can train a reverse bug model then that uh, can find find bugs using this synthetic data. So that's like one example. Um, but yeah, there are lots of ideas for how to. You can also um, you can also do a bunch of work, not even at the model level, of taking the biggest models and then maybe giving them access to a lot of information that's not just the code. Like it's kind of a hard problem to like stare at a file and be like, "Where's the bug?" And you know that's that's hard for humans often, right? And so often you have to to run the code and being able to see things like traces and step through a debugger. Um, there's another whole another direction where it like kind of tends toward that. And it could also be that there are kind of two different product form factors here. It could be that you have a really specialty model that's quite fast, that's kind of running in the background and trying to spot bugs. And it might be that sometimes, sort of to Arvid's earlier example about you know some nefarious input box bug, it might be that sometimes you want to like there's you know there's a bug. You're not just like checking hypothesis free. You're like this is a problem. I really want to solve it. And you zap that with tons and tons and tons of compute. And you're willing to put in like fifty dollars to solve that bug or something even more. <laughs> 